What's up guys, we have the Haybike Braun, and in today's video, we're gonna unbox it, build it, and I'm gonna give you a full review. So what makes the Haybike Braun special compared to other bikes? Well, I don't know, but we'll find out. It is a 48 volt, 18 amp hour battery. When you order it online, this is the box that'll come in. Any sort of discount I can offer you will be in the description box below this video. Stable. It's supposed to have a pretty quick charge time, so I'm guessing it has a big charger. Hey, bike. Da, 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 da. Ooh, four amps. That is the biggest charger I've seen on any of these fat tire e-bikes so far. Most of them come with either a two amp or a three amp charger at most. This one is four amps. So that means this bike would charge twice as fast as a two amp charger. So that means you could probably ride this thing more than once in a day. So what else we got here? Pedals and some other piece for installation. Snip. Oh yeah, the four inch wide fat tires. What kind of brakes we working with here? Tektro, that's a good sign, name brand, rotors. Looks like a 180 millimeter rotor, decent. So this bike does come in multiple colors. I decided to go with the green. Let's take a look at it. Pretty decent looking. Battery mounts inside the frame, so that's nice for a more stealthy, clean look. And dude, we've gotta check out the seat post in just a moment. Compression adjustment, preload adjustment. Got the keys. So let's get this battery out of here. Definitely got some mass to it. So lithium ion battery, 48 volt, 18 amp hour, which equates to 864 watt hours of energy. We'll have to get out there and see what kind of range that equates to in the real world. Interesting, the battery says charge current, three amp max, but we have a four amp charger shipped to us. Another interesting fact on this battery, it says 15 amps max discharge current. So what's the maximum power this bike could do? Hey Siri, what's 48 times 15? So I am a little bit confused here, it says, Charge current is three amps max on the battery, but on the charger, it says, it says it can output four amps. Now the way these things work is the battery won't draw any more current than the uh, circuit in here allows for it to do. So even though this charger can do four amps, the circuit board in this battery should be limiting it to a three amp draw. So check it out, one of the cool features about this bike is this uh, motorcycle headlight. It's supposed to come on it, like right up there in the front of the bike, and I actually think it looks pretty cool. However, I'm having a little bit of a problem here. From what I can see, the brackets are here, where the headlight's supposed to go. There is no headlight. I've thoroughly inspected that box, and I'm not seeing the headlight for this bike anywhere. So I guess we'll just continue this review without the headlight. The tail light is there, the motor's there. So yeah, don't know where the headlight is. I mean, could it be somewhere down here? Not seeing it, dude. So I gotta pop this guy off the top here. Get rid of this thing. Wah, 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 wah. It's really important you tighten this screw down before you do these ones on the side. Uh, one thing I do want to point out I really like about this bike is it actually comes with a water bottle holder. Kind of a rare feature on these e-bikes for some reason, but it's there and I like it. So take those four screws out up here on top and the bars on. So it does have the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. The levers are excellent. Don't, don't want to pull on these because they are hydraulic. Don't want to lock up those pistons. Shimano gears, pretty standard for these fat tire e-bikes. Seven speeds, downshift, upshift, downshift, upshift. Thumb throttle on the right, heck yeah. Here's what the grips look like. They are rubber, ergonomic shape. They actually seem pretty nice. Got your toggles here for on off, higher lower speed. Not sure what the F is yet. Horn, front light. What is this switch for? Is this a dropper seat post? No. Is it? I'm so excited right now. I don't know if this is a dropper seat post, but if it is, I am pumped. I don't know, I can't tell where that line's going to, but let's get this front tire on first. The through axle on the front wheel does not have quick release levers. 
That means nobody can walk up and easily steal your front wheel on this bike. Or sorry, that was just the placeholder. Uh, here's the actual axle. No quick release on this. No easy thefts. No easy transportation either. The hydraulic disc brake piece. Go ahead and throw this wheel in here. Quick reminder for you guys, if you are finding this review helpful and you do want to buy this bike, I do have a link below this video in the description box and that would help support this channel and me making these reviews. So if you want it and you want to support the channel, if you buy it through the link below, it will help support the channel. If not, I have lots of e-bike reviews on this channel. Oh, and that link below does give you a discount as well as help support the channel. Win-win. Now, on to the review. Tighten them pedals down. Shimano Turney derailleur. Pretty standard equipment on a fat tire e-bike of this budget. The gears seem to have no indicated brand. Looks like a buffeting motor. We'll have to check that out in a moment. It's definitely a geared hub drive motor. Typically the geared motors do uh, a lot better at climbing hills than the ungeared hub motors. Don't know what controller is powering this whole unit, uh, but it is enclosed in the frame. So I like that it's not mounted on the exterior. Some of these uh, less expensive, cheaper fat tire e-bikes, you see the controller mounted somewhere on the outside of the frame, which leaves it prone to damage. Let's take a look at the brakes. So as I mentioned before, Tektro disc brakes. Tektro is good. 180 millimeter rotor on front. Look at the suspension. We gotta check this out in a moment. It's got bump stops. I don't think I've seen this on one of these yet. So on the rear, we also have Tektro and it's also got a 180 millimeter rotor on the rear Tektro brand as well. Now looking at the motor, it's branded as a hay bike. Sure looks like a buffeting to me. So we'll have to check out the performance of this motor soon. If you flip your screen over, maybe you can read that 48 volt. The seat is relatively wide. Definitely got some squish to it. Seems like it'll be comfortable. And front suspension at first glance looks pretty legit. Looks like there's like a uh, pretty good amount of travel there. And I just can't believe they have bump stops on this. This is almost like a dirt bike feature here. The bump stop prevents it from banging up against the frame. Taking a look at the specs manual here, uh, max load is 330 pounds according to the manual. The package weighed 97 pounds, but the e-bike itself weighs 78 pounds. Out of the box, you'll get 20 miles per hour according to the manual, but you can increase it to 28. Charge time, four to five hours from empty, of course. Range, so with my experience, a 78 pound bike does massive four inch wide tires and 864 watt hours of energy. You're not getting 65 miles of range on this bike, even with pedal assist. I mean, maybe 45. I mean, maybe Lance Armstrong would get 65 miles, but honestly, who wants to be on a bike 65 miles anyway? Maybe 45 if you're light. Pure electric, 35 to 45 miles. Uh, maybe if you're on flat ground and you weigh 50 pounds or you're going really slow, don't worry, we'll put it to a range test. I'll show you what kind of range I get. I, I weigh 195 pounds. Max grade ability, according to the manual, 15 degrees. We'll put it to my hill test. Oh, and apparently it has an app with Bluetooth, so that's pretty cool. Are right, you guys ready for this? I don't think you are. It's got a dropper seat post. Another thing worth pointing out about the fork on this bike is it is actually a double crown. That means it's more rigid and stronger than the typical forks we see on these bikes. Double crown just means uh, you can see the suspension post here sticks up way higher. Typically on these bikes, we only see the suspension posts come up to here and this entire portion up here does not exist. So it does add a little bit more weight, but it's more rigid. All right, going to do the hill test on the Hay Bike Braun. This is a 19.5% uh, grade, pedal assist five, throttle only. I weigh 195 pounds. So it's borderline enough torque to do it. I just need to just barely press on the pedals a little bit. So as we ride along today, we will do a top speed test as well as a brake test and a range test. But for right now, one of the coolest things about this bike is the dropper seat posts. You push this in and the seat just drops down. So that's like a pretty cool like mountain bike style feature. So what you do is just kind of hop off the seat and press this in and it'll come back up. Checking out the pedal assist modes in pedal assist one. 
it will max you out at about 10 miles an hour on a full charge. Wind pedal assist too. Feel that power kick in immediately, brings you up to 15.5. Uh, Bump it on up to three. Picks you up to about 21.6. Oh, we got another e-bike review happening here. So technically a class two e-bike should top out at 20 miles an hour under throttle only. So this one will bring you beyond that under throttle only, which I think is awesome, honestly, because why not go faster? So pedal assist four holds me at 25. Let me press pedal assist five now. Adds a little speed on, bringing it up to uh, 27 and change. I didn't have enough time to quite get to top speed. I'm guessing about 28. Let's try actually pedaling this bike now. So under pedal assist five, pedaling. Yeah, I feel the, the motor kicking in under my legs. So we'll head on down to the beach and do a little range test, try some other hills and get a feel for this bike. And I'll tell you my thoughts and opinions on it. Try the gears out a little bit here. They definitely are snappy. They work as expected for a Shimano Tourney gear set. All you need for a bike like this. Seat feels comfortable. I like the seat, it's wide and squishy. There's a little bit of a delay to the pedal assist when you start pedaling, which can honestly kind of make it a little more safe. Like some of these cadence sensor, which this is a cadence sensor style bike. Uh, if the pedal assist kicks in too quickly and you're coming from a stop, it can kind of tend to jerk you around and throw, you, throw your weight back unexpectedly. So speed wise, I mean, it's, it's fast enough to keep up with traffic. It goes 28 miles an hour. The rubber hand grips feel nice with these gloves on. I don't really love the feel of rubber hand grips directly on my hands, but they're nice because they're like squishy and padded. So with some gloves, they feel nice. What's the max speed? Well, we're going 28 and it's about topping out. Woo, passing the fire truck. Brakes still aren't quite bedded in all the way. I have a feeling these hydraulic brakes are going to work really well once they get up to full operating conditions. So this suspension, I have to talk more about the suspension in a minute because it's actually awesome. But let's do an acceleration test right now. So we'll go ahead and do the acceleration test from zero throttle only. I weigh 195 pounds, uh, pretty much no wind, flat ground and ready, go. Instant response from the motor, almost a full charge. We're only 2.2 miles into this ride. 18, 20, 22, <laughs> 24, 25, 27, 20, uh, I better stop. So pretty decent acceleration. It's, uh, I'm happy with it, honestly. It's a 750 watt bike. The torque is not listed. Uh, feels like a medium amount of torque, pretty much from like a slow speed climbing hills. It does decent, pretty good. It's not the strongest hill cl climber I've ever tried, but it's geared pretty darn well because it can climb pretty steep hills. And also it has like a pretty darn good top speed. So a lot of times what I find is on these bikes that are good hill climbers, they don't have a, a really high top speed. You know, they top out at like 20 instead of 28. All right, so let's talk about the suspension a little bit here. We are on a fairly bumpy part of the ride to the beach here. And this is the nicest suspension I've ever felt on a budget-friendly electric bike. It is hydraulic front suspension with a dual crown fork. This is not normal for a bike like this to have hydraulic suspension. And that compression really makes a big difference dialing it down. I got it dialed all the way down now and it's really squishy and bouncy, which is great for, you know, just riding along normal paths. But if you take it off road and you want more more play or less play in the suspension so it doesn't bottom out. You can firm it up too. So let's firm it all the way up. 
lot of clicks. So that will actually lock it out completely, turning it all the way. I don't want to lock it out. Let's do like one click from locked. Oh yeah, dang. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised with the fork. The suspension on this bike is great. Usually they're just like pretty garbage, honestly, on these budget-friendly fat bikes that I review. Not the case with this bike. All right, we have made it to the beach. So there is a little bit of a lag from the time you start turning the pedals over to when the power kicks in. If that bothers you, you can just override it with the thumb throttle. So I'll start pedaling now. Now is when the motor kicked in. So I'll say now, now again. Ready? Now I'm pedaling. Now the motor's kicking in. So it's about a second lag when you're cruising. How's it do off-road? Well, I'm sure it does just fine. Oh yeah, with these beefy tires. Man, that, that front suspension really kicks in. Dude, this bike is good off-road. So normally these bikes, I would not consider riding downstairs. This one I actually would with the dropper seat post and this fork, man, like it's genuinely good. Let me crank the suspension up a bit. All right, we could do this. Seat is dropped. Oh yeah, dude, this bike is awesome. I'm telling you, man, that the dropper seat post makes all the difference. You can drop it down so you can like get out of the saddle. So I guess one of my complaints about this bike would just be the turning radius isn't the greatest. This is as far as I can turn the wheel. Right there, that is. Um, so I have been on bikes with a greater turner, turning radius, but I mean, it's not bad. Man, this bike is surprisingly maneuverable. This is by far the most maneuverable, confidence-inspiring uh, fat tire e-bike that I've ever been on. At 78 pounds, the front fork suspension on this thing makes all the difference. And I mean, the dropper seat post isn't perfect. It does stick a little bit, uh, but I mean, it works. Like, it's good enough, like, especially for a bike in this price point. In case you're not familiar with the way a dropper seat post works is you press this lever in and the seat will come up and then it will just stay wherever you leave it until you press the lever in again. And assuming your weight is on the seat, it pushes it down until when you let off there and it will just hold it in place. So like the way you wanna use it is like if you're going down some steep terrain or something and you need to drop the seat, so you can stand up out of the saddle and this won't be hitting your butt and knocking you off the bike. That's how you do it. Alternatively, another way you could do it is just to get off the bike. Like this is in the down position and that is in the up position. So at the top, I'm just like, I can barely reach and it's like the proper pedal distance for me. It makes it a little hard to, you know, be on the bike, but I can just, Press this down, drop down, and easily touch my feet on the ground when I'm at a stop sign or something. So with my new new found ability to ride stairs on a fat tire e-bike, dang dude, this fork, it's just so good for a budget e-bike. So these fat tire e-bikes can always do the sand pretty well. Let's just go ahead and give it a try here. Whoa. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. The fat tires, 750 watt motor. Oh, oh. Lost my balance a little bit, but the bike can do it no problem. I wanna check the speedometer here too, make sure this thing's accurate. GPS right here on the right. So it lags a little bit on the one in my hand here, but yeah, they seem pretty darn close. So the speedometer is accurate on this bike. So let's get a little range update. We are 6.6 miles into this ride. We started at two miles, 51.4 volts on the display. It's showing full battery, that's not true. We can look at a chart here on my phone, a 48 volt system, 51.5 volts is a 80% charge. So that's the nice thing about being able to see your actual voltage on this bike. It's much more useful once you get familiar with it, you'll get familiar with this chart pretty quickly. 
anyway, we're just over 80% after 6.6 miles of pretty harsh riding. Honestly, I've just been going pedal assist five and really getting out here and uh, enjoying this bike and seeing its performance, not, not pedaling much. All right, gonna do the brake test here, bring it up to 20 miles an hour and then give it a, a grab of the levers. So right about 20, stop. Brakes are decent. Not the strongest brakes. They might not be entirely bedded in completely. Give them another try. All right, right around 20, stop. Yeah, pretty good brakes really. All right, we'll do an acceleration up to 20 under full throttle and pedaling and then a brake test as well so we're going right about 20. pretty darn good brakes all right now what we're going to do for the hay bike brawn is take it up the california incline which is a long steep incline we'll see how it can hold up they claim we can do 15% grade on this bike. Um, I want to say it's an 11% grade going up California incline. All right, we'll start out with a little rolling start here, going into the relatively steep section here. A little loopy loop circle, handling it no problem. I am under full throttle. So at the bottom of the California incline, we're at 50.1 volts. Uh, 10 miles into this ride, basically 10.1 miles into this ride because I started at two miles. According to the battery voltage chart, we are 50.7 volts would be 75% battery. So the indicator is showing it's full, but it's actually 75%. What we're gonna do is pedal assist five, just smash down on thumb, thumb throttle and see how it does, how much torque we got in this bike. So we're picking up speed. A mild incline here. I want to say, I'll throw the number up on the screen. I think it's about like 11% or so. Uh, they claim we can do 15% and it's doing this no problem, still gaining speed. So let me go ahead and just stop it again because I mean, it's already 18 miles an hour climbing this thing, not even on a full charge. So again, here, no pedaling, wide open throttle, pedal assist five. Yep, they can do this incline, no problem. This is a gradual incline. So to give you an idea of what we just climbed, we were just down there. All right, when I said we were gonna come up here. Now, we are up here. Beautiful day in Santa Monica, California. Thanks for joining me for this ride, guys. If you're enjoying it, give me a thumbs up. Whoa, I figured out how to work the app finally. Look, check it out. You press close. I turn it off. Start. Close, start, close. Wow, pretty sweet, really. Hey, bike. Hey, bike. So real quick, we can take a look at the app here. Apparently, you can get in here and change your assist strength. So it starts out uh, on default, you're on three. So you can uh, change this number. Speed limit is set to 39.1 mile per hour max. You can also change how many pedal assist levels there are. So you can do zero to threes and then five or also nine. So just making it back into the neighborhood here, battery is showing 47.9, 48 volts, which according to the chart here is about 55% uh, battery. And I just crossed over 20 miles on the odometer, which puts this ride at 18 miles. So if we do the math out, you know, that'd be about 37, 38 miles I could expect riding this bike weighing 195 pounds. So if you weigh less than that and you're riding less aggressively than me, you'll get more range. So actually not bad at all. I mean, 18 amp hours, 48 volt system, performed a little better than I was expecting, honestly. Especially considering all of the uh, performance tests I was doing, you know, acceleration tests, hill climb tests, uh, the bike actually performs pretty well. I mean, 18 amp hour, 48 volt battery is on the larger side for these fat tire e-bikes. Uh, you know, sometimes we see smaller batteries in these things for sure, like 15 amp hours, 14 amp hours. 
20 amp hours is about the biggest battery we ever see in a fat tire e-bike so 18 is pretty legit so overall i'd have to say the highlights of this bike are the hydraulic dual crown front suspension fork it's pretty great honestly the best one i've tried out of all the fat tire e-bikes i've tried and then that dropper seat post that is pretty awesome all around i'm pretty impressed with the hay bike brawn if you're thinking about buying one you can grab one in the link below this video if you buy through my link it will help support this channel in these reviews as well as give you a discount on your purchase for the price i really don't think there's much more you can ask for from a fat tire electric bike so thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up drop a comment down below and i'll catch you in my next review